Hey you guys, I'm Kiara Selena and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to take a manual BP. Stay tuned. Hey you guys, welcome to my channel, Nursing with Key, where I make a whole bunch of nursing videos sharing tips and tricks that I've learned along my nursing journey, as well as advice from myself, other nursing students, and nursing teachers to help you have the smoothest nursing journey. So if you're into things like this, you might want to consider subscribing, so you'll be the first person to get a notification every time I make a video. So the first thing you need to understand is when you're auscultating, so when you take your stethoscope and you put them in your ears and you put the end of your stethoscope on the person's arm, what exactly is it that you are listening for? The second thing you need to understand is what your systolic and diastolic number actually mean. And the third thing you need to understand is what are the ranges? So what's dangerous, what's normal, and what's a crisis? So let's get into those things before we get into how to do a blood pressure. So when you take your stethoscope and you're listening for a beat, what you're listening for is actually the first beat you hear and the last beat you hear. So the first beat you're gonna hear on your stethoscope is going to be your systolic number. And the very last beat you're going to hear is going to be your diastolic number. Simple, right? Lastly, your ranges. So optimally what we're looking for is a number, a systolic number around 120 and a diastolic number around 80. That's what they say is normal. Now sometimes you're going to have people come in and their, their blood pressure is going to be a little bit lower or a little bit higher than those numbers, but that doesn't mean that you need to worry. I'll tell you when to worry in a minute. So ranges between 120, uh, 120 systolic and 80 diastolic are, is normal. Now, it's, let's say somebody comes in with a systolic number between 120 and 129 and a diastolic number 80 or less. Now, that's early stage hypertension, what they say, but that's still not nothing you should worry about too, too much. So definitely monitor that person's vital signs, continue to check on that person, keep an eye on that person and report it to the doctor if you feel like you need to, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't report it to the, to the doctor, maybe an RN, but that's pretty much it. Now lastly, let's say a person comes in with a systolic number that's 140 and higher and a diastolic number that's 90 and higher. Now that is what we call a hypertensive crisis. Now that needs to be reported immediately because if something is not done as quick as possible, that person's state can decline extremely fast. So that is really a crisis, that's an emergency that needs to be reported immediately. So now that we went over the three most important things you need to understand, let's get into how to actually do the blood pressure. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your patient's arm. I would have gotten a fake patient like one of my classmates, but they're on break. But anyway, you're gonna take the person's arm and you're gonna come up to the center of the arm right here. Now, you're gonna feel a little dent in the middle of your brachial, of your brachial area right here. Right next to that dent, you're gonna feel a little bone you're gonna feel it on both sides okay now I always use three fingers to look for a bee I know some people use two but I just find it easier to find with three so if you put your three fingers in the middle of your arm right here and you just slide over a little bit towards where the bone is you should feel a heartbeat once you found that heartbeat, that is where you're going to put your stethoscope. Now let's get into how to use your stethoscope. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your stethoscope and just look at it. You're gonna see that it has two sides. It has one side that kind of comes out like this and then it has another side that's completely flat. Now the side that's completely flat is the side that we're going to be using. So my stethoscope can turn. If you look inside here, if I flip it, you'll see that it's open if I flip it again, you'll see that it is closed. Now, what that means is, now some stethoscopes are different, like the one that I have here. The one that I have here doesn't have the other side. It only has the flat side. So if you have a stethoscope like this, um, this would be fine, you won't get confused. But if you have one like mine, make sure that it is on the right side. So now you would follow your regular procedure steps. So you're going to check your TNP, check your doctor's order to see why you're taking the patient's blood pressure. And once that's done, you're going to go to your patient's room, knock the door, wait for the patient to allow you in, and you're going to hand sanitize. Now that I'm in my patient's room, I'm going to pro provide privacy. So I provided privacy for the patient. This is my patient right here. Um, I wanted to get a, well, I wanted to get an actual person, like one of my classmates, to do their blood pressure, but um, they have an exam this afternoon, so I just want to allow them to study, and I'm going to use 
the mannequin. So I'm going to come into the room, introduce myself. So good morning, Mr. Phillips. My name is Kiara. I'm going to be your student nurse or student practical nurse or a nurse, whatever. So introduce yourself. You tell them what you're going to do. So the doctor ordered for me to take your, your blood pressure. You're going to explain to them why. You're going to get consent from them. And once you've gotten consent, you're going to look for your two identifiers. So make sure you ask your patient for their name and you check their bracelet to match their name and date of birth with whatever it is that they told you. Anyways guys, that's it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.